Well, hey there, folks. Jeremiah the Geometry Cowboy talking to you about the midpoint formula. What did the cowboy say when he accidentally farted? Darn tootin'. <laughs> the first vocabulary term is the midpoint of a segment. That's the point halfway between the endpoints of a segment. So here we have a segment AB with endpoints A and B. The point halfway between those endpoints would be point C. That is the midpoint of this segment. You can tell it's the midpoint because each of these segments are congruent to one another. That's what these little tick marks mean. You can also tell this by looking at the measures of each segment. The measure of AB is 28 feet, the measure of AC is 14 feet, and the measure of CB is also 14 feet. Each of those is exactly half of the total measure, meaning that C has to be halfway in between points A and B. C is our midpoint of segment AB. Examples. Now example one says find the midpoint of segment PQ. So here we have segment PQ with endpoints on a number line. Okay, so how do I find the midpoint of this segment with endpoints on a number line? Well, there's actually an easy way to do this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take each of those X coordinates, add them together and divide them by two. You're basically just averaging the X coordinates on your given number line. So what is our X of one? What's our X of two? It doesn't matter which one you pick to be X of one and X of two. You'll get the same answer either way. But since I've color coordinated this very nicely for you, we'll say this P is gonna be our X of one at negative five and Q at three is gonna be our X of two. We then take those corresponding numbers, plug them in here, take negative five, plug it in for X of one, take three, plug it in for X sub two. We then simplify, simplify the numerator first. So negative five plus three is gonna give us negative two. And then negative two divided by two gives you negative one. That means negative one, if I were to put a point there, that would be the midpoint between points P and Q. And that's how you do this. Don't just sit there like a tumbleweed, you try. Okay, doing the same thing here. So again, we want to find the midpoint of segment AB. Since the endpoints are on a number line, what we're going to do is we're going to add together those two X values and divide them by two. We're averaging their locations on the number line. So which one do I pick to be X of one? Which one do I pick to be X of two? It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. So since I've color coordinated this, let's take negative eight, make that our X of one. Let's take nine, make that our X sub two. So we plug those into their corresponding spots here. Negative eight plus nine is gonna be positive one. And then one divided by two is just one half. That means one half, if I were to put a point at one half on the number line, so that's halfway between zero and one, that is the midpoint between points A and B, the midpoint of segment AB. Again, you could have flipped these in our equation. If you did nine plus negative eight, you would have still got one over two, same answer. Now let's talk about the midpoint formula. If we have two points and they're no longer on a number line, they're on the coordinate plane. If I wanna find the midpoint between two points on the coordinate plane, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to average the X values, comma, average the Y values. So again, I'm just adding the two X values together and dividing by two. Then I'm adding the two Y values together and dividing by two. That will give us the point that is right smack dab in between those two points, the midpoint of that given segment. So example two says find the midpoint of segment AB. So here we have a point A and a point B, and we wanna find the midpoint of segment AB if I were to draw a line between those. So how do I do that? Well, again, I use my midpoint formula. In order to use my midpoint formula, I need an X sub one and a Y sub one and an X sub two and a Y sub two. Which one do I choose to be which? It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. But since I already have one that's green and red, let's just make this our X of one, Y sub one, and this our X of two, Y sub two. We then plug each part into its corresponding spot in the midpoint formula. So four goes in for X of one, negative six goes in for X of two. Four goes in for Y sub one, six goes in for Y sub two. We then simplify. We simplify our numerators first. So what is four plus negative six? That's the same thing as four minus six. And four minus six we know is negative two. Four plus six we know is 10. We then simplify each one separately. Negative two divided by two is gonna be negative one. And 10 divided by two is gonna be five. 
We then look at our graph over here and plot this point to make sure that it is our midpoint. You can check your answer just by plotting. So we look, negative five comma one. We go over negative one on the x-axis, up five on our y-axis, put a point. Yes, that does appear to be our midpoint of segment AB. Strap on your boots, time for a new try. Okay, doing the same thing. So this time we have points L and N. We want to find the midpoint of segment LN. So this segment right here is in purple. And if we want to find the midpoint between two points on the coordinate plane, we're going to use the midpoint formula, which means we need an X sub one and a Y sub one and an X sub two and a Y sub two. Which one is which? It doesn't matter as long as they're the same X sub one, Y sub one and X sub two, Y sub two or X sub two, Y sub two, X sub one, Y sub one. So I'm going to just stick with the color coordination that we've been doing. Negative two comma negative one is going to be our X sub one, Y sub one. And then three comma two is going to be our X sub two, Y sub two. We then plug each part into its corresponding spot in the midpoint formula so negative 2 goes in for x of 1 3 goes in for x of 2 negative 1 goes in for y sub 1 and then 2 goes in for y sub 2 we then simplify the numerators what's negative 2 plus 3 that's going to be positive 1 and what's negative 1 plus 2 that's also going to be positive 1 so we get 1 over 2 comma 1 over 2 or 1 half comma 1 half and we can always check our answer we go over to the graph where is 1 half comma 1 half we go over 1 half on the x-axis up 1 half on the y-axis put a point there does that look like it's the midpoint between l and n Yes, it does. We got the right answer. Now, example three says, use the midpoint formula to find the midpoint for each pair of points. Check your answer by graphing. So we're just doing the same thing. They just don't give us a graph this time. So we have two points, eight comma four and 16 comma negative seven. Since we're using the midpoint formula, we need an X sub one and a Y sub one and an X sub two and a Y sub two. So I'm gonna choose our first point to be X sub one, Y sub one, our second point to be X sub two, Y sub two. Again, doesn't matter which one you choose to be which. We then have our distance formula here and we plug in the coordinates to their coordinates corresponding spots. So eight is going to go in for our X of one, 16 goes in for our X of two, four is going to go in for our Y sub one, negative seven goes in for Y sub two. We then simplify our numerators. What's eight plus 16? That's 24. And then over here, what's four plus negative seven? The same thing as four minus seven, which is negative three. We then simplify what's 24 divided by two. That's 12. Over here, what's negative three divided by two? Well, you could just leave that negative three halves if you like as an improper fraction. Or if you wanted to, you could write it as a mixed number, which is negative one and one half. So now the second part of this is check your answer by graphing. So we're gonna go over to this graph. We're gonna plot our two points, eight comma four. We go over to eight on the x-axis up to four on the y-axis, put a point. And then 16 comma negative seven. We go over to 16 on the x-axis down to negative seven on the y-axis, put a point. And then draw a line segment connecting those two and plot our midpoint, which is over 12 on the x-axis down one and one half on the y-axis, put a point. Does that appear to be the midpoint of our given segment yes it does therefore we got the right answer saddle up partner time for a new try okay doing the same thing here we have two points these are our endpoints and we want to find the midpoint between them and we're going to use the midpoint formula so to use the midpoint formula we need one of these endpoints to be x sub one y sub one and the other one to be x sub two, y sub two. Again, you could have flipped these, you would have got the same answer. Next, we go ahead and plug those in to our midpoint formula. So negative five goes in for x sub one, negative 12 goes in for x sub two. Nine goes in for y sub one, negative 18 goes in for y sub two. We then simplify this here, negative five plus negative 12 is gonna be negative 17. Or you could think about this as negative five minus 12, which is still negative 17. On this side, nine plus negative 18, the same thing as nine minus 18, which is negative nine. So our answer, you could write as negative 17 halves comma negative nine halves. If you didn't like putting it in improper fractions, you could also write it as a mixed number. And I would recommend that in this case, because we're checking our answer by graphing. And it's really hard to remember what is negative 17 over 2 without using the calculator. So what I want to do is put this as a mixed number. So how do I put this as a mixed number? 2 goes into 17 eight times with 1 as our remainder. So this would be negative 8 and 1 half. On this side, 2 goes into 9 four times with 1 as our remainder. So this would turn into negative 4 and a half. This is our answer as mixed numbers. This is our answer as improper fractions. This is going to be much easier for us to graph. So let's go ahead and plot each 
each of these points. So if I plot negative five comma nine, I go over negative five on the x-axis up nine on the y-axis, put a point. And then negative 12 comma negative 18, I go over negative 12 on the x-axis down negative 18 on the y-axis, put a point. And then draw a line segment connecting those two. And I plot my midpoint, negative eight and a half on the x-axis down negative four and a half on the y-axis. And let's see, is that between the two points? Yes, that does appear to be our midpoint. So our answers check out. Next example four it says, if point B at negative two comma five is the midpoint of segment AC, find the coordinates of point A given that C is at negative five comma four. So what are we doing here? Well, it gives us two points. Let's graph those right away. Point B is at negative two comma five. So we go over negative two on the x-axis of five on the y-axis, we'll put a point. Point C is at negative five comma four. So we go over negative five on the x-axis of four on the y-axis, put a point. Now let's examine this question. What does it give us? Well, it says if point B is the midpoint of segment AC. So since we have something that says it's the midpoint, we're probably gonna end up using the midpoint formula. Now, point B is our midpoint, right? And it's the midpoint of segment AC, meaning that point A and point C would be our endpoints. So we have the midpoint and we know one of the endpoints. We just need to find the coordinates of the other endpoint, point A. Perfect. So C, we could make X sub 1 comma Y sub 1 or X sub 2 comma Y sub 2. Since it's segment AC, I'll just say that C is our second point. So we'll call that X sub 2 comma Y sub 2. Cool. Now that we know that, what we can do is plug in what we know. We can take negative 5, plug it in for X sub 2. We can take 4, plug it in for Y sub 2. The midpoint is a little more weird, right? Because this is the midpoint formula, meaning that our midpoint should be a point over here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take negative two comma five and plug it in for our midpoint because that is the midpoint of our segment AC. So we now have the midpoint equal to our midpoint formula. All that's left is to figure out what is X sub one and what is Y sub one. These are the coordinates of our endpoint point A. So how do I solve for these? Well, I need to create two equations. One where our X value of our midpoint formula is equal to the x value of our midpoint. So if I set those things equal to each other, I can just solve this for x sub one, and that should give me the x value of our endpoint, point A. So how do I solve this? Well, x sub one plus negative five is the same thing as x sub one minus five. I then get rid of this divided by two by multiplying both sides by two. These are gonna cancel each other out, and over here, two times negative two is negative four. I then get x sub one all by itself by adding five to both sides of the equation, these cancel each other out and I get X sub one is equal to one. So that means point A, our other endpoint besides point C, has an X coordinate of one. So now let's figure out the Y coordinate. To get the Y coordinate, I set the Y value of our midpoint equal to the Y value of our midpoint formula, Y sub one plus four over two. Now all I have to do is solve for Y sub one to get the Y value of point A. So how do I solve this? Well, I get rid of this divided by two by multiplying both sides by two. These cancel each other out and I get Y sub one plus four is equal to 10. I then get Y sub one all by itself by subtracting four on both sides. These cancel each other out. I get Y sub one is equal to six. That means that the X value of point A is one one. The y value of point A is six. So our point A can be located at one comma six. So I go over one on the x-axis, up six on the y-axis, put a point. And let's make sure that B looks like the midpoint of segment AC. Yes, it does. Therefore, we got the right answer. Don't just sit in a barrel like a rodeo clown. You try. Okay, so this time it says if y at negative three comma one is the midpoint of segment xz, find the coordinates of point z given that x is at one comma seven. So we're doing the same thing. This time we again plot our points right away. So y is at negative three comma one. So I go over to negative three on the x-axis of one on the y-axis, put a point, that's point y. Then x is at one comma seven. I go over one on the x-axis up seven on the y-axis, put a point, that's where point x is. Now let's figure out what is this question asking us to find? Well, it says if y is the midpoint of segment xz, so obviously we're gonna have to use the midpoint formula, we need to find the coordinates of point Z, one of the endpoints. Okay, so it gives us an endpoint, point X. It gives us the midpoint, point Y. So we have to find the coordinates for the other endpoint, point Z, just like we did last time. 
Okay, cool. So we know the midpoint is Y. We know the end point is X. Well, this we could plug in for X sub one comma Y sub one or X sub two comma Y sub two. Since it's segment XZ, we can just do X sub one Y sub one because it's the first end point. Let's do that. So I'm gonna plug in one for my X sub one, seven for my Y sub one. I'm gonna plug in this point right here, negative three comma one for my midpoint. Now, all I have to do then is solve for each of these coordinates, x sub two and y sub two. Those will be the x and y coordinates of our other endpoint, point z. So how do I do this? Well, again, this right here in our midpoint formula gives us the x value of our midpoint, which we know now is negative three. So I'm gonna take this and set it equal to negative three. Now I can solve for the x value of my other endpoint. So how do I solve this? I multiply both sides by two. This turns into negative six. These cancel each other out. I then get x sub two all by itself by subtracting one on both sides. These ones cancel each other out and I'm left with x sub two is equal to negative seven. This is the x coordinate for my other endpoint, point z. I then find the y coordinate for my endpoint by setting one equal to seven plus y sub two over two, because this in the midpoint formula gives us the y value of our midpoint, which we already know is one. So we set those things equal to each other. We solve for y sub two by multiplying both sides by two. These cancel each other out over here. Two times one is two. We then get y sub two all by itself by subtracting seven on both sides. These cancel each other out and we get y sub two is equal to negative five meaning that this is the x coordinate of our endpoint this is the y coordinate of our endpoint point z therefore z is going to be at negative seven comma negative five i then graph point z to make sure that y is the midpoint of segment xz and make sure i did this right so i go over a negative seven on the x-axis down negative five on the y-axis put a point and then draw a line segment connecting those two does Y appear to be the midpoint of segment XZ? Yes, it does. So it looks like we did it right. Now, word problem says, assume the city of Huntington Beach is placed on the coordinate plane below with the high school located at the origin. If a Villa's El Ranchito restaurant is located eight miles south and five miles east of the high school and in and out is located seven miles north and six miles west of the high school, determine whether or not the high school is the midpoint between the two restaurants. So step one in a word problem, we're not scared, we can do this. Step two, we need to define our variable. So what is this question asking us to find? It's asking us to determine whether or not the high school is the midpoint between the two restaurants. So it looks like we're trying to figure out what the midpoint between the two restaurants is. So we'll say M is the midpoint between the two restaurants. We then figure out what equation are we going to use? Well, we're trying to find the midpoint between the two restaurants. So Let's use the midpoint formula, right? Easy. Now, let's graph what we know. In this question, it says the high school is located at the origin. So at the origin, zero comma zero, we're gonna put the high school. It then says Avila's El Ranchito restaurant is located eight miles south and five miles east of the high school. So eight miles south, that would be eight down. And five miles east, that would be five to the right. And then we put a point there, that would be at five comma negative eight that's where avila's is then in and out is going to be seven miles north and six miles west of the high school seven miles north and six miles west to the left so we put a point there this point is now located at negative six comma seven now all i have to do is figure out which one do i want to be x sub one y sub one and which one do i want to be x sub two y sub two well i've already color coordinated for you but you could have flipped it if you wanted to i'm going to choose this one to be x sub one y sub one and this one to be x sub two y sub two i then plug the coordinates into their corresponding spots i plug in five for x sub one i plug in negative six for x sub two i plug in negative eight for y sub one and seven for y sub two i then simplify this so five plus negative six is the same as five minus six and then negative eight plus seven is going to give me negative one now over here what is five minus six that is going to be negative one as well meaning that the midpoint between the two restaurants is going to be located at negative one half comma negative one half but the high school is located at zero comma zero. So as you can see, the segment connecting the two restaurants has a midpoint at negative one half comma negative one half, not at zero comma zero. Therefore, HBHS is not the midpoint between the two restaurants.